Hello and welcome to another video from Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. I do thank you guys for watching. As you can see, I have some new stuff, new equipment set up here. I got a different camera up here, so hopefully this exposure thing that the other camera is doing isn't as bad. I still see I have a glare on my bald head, um, and it looks a little bit brighter here for this camera uh, but for this camera I do have the option to digitally zoom in on you guys so uh, so hopefully this comes out works out the way I want it to <laughs> my goal is to make your guys viewing a little bit better hopefully I still see I have a nasty glare of course because uh, I have these lights directly above but enough of the blabbering Let's get uh, let's get to it. So I'm working obviously on a ruthless. This is the 4500, I think this is. I'm not sure. Uh, if you want a great amp, a great board with a great customer service, uh, Ben at Ruthless Audio, give him give him a call, give him a holler. Um, yeah. So. I'm just going to kind of continue on where I left off. So I uh, I found that each half of the amplifier, both sides, the high and low, had a shorted transistor on each side. So the shorts on those caused a failure in the power supply. Obviously, what you guys can see right there. Um, I'm not sure if it was under voltage or not, but there's no blown gate resistors on this. So the fault current got cleared really quick or his breaker open quick or fuse or however he's protecting his stuff but whoever was running this either didn't have a lot of available current as this thing was short circuiting itself um, or he had a really really awesome overcurrent protection system going on uh, most cases though it's usually they don't have they don't have a lot of current and what happens is you know if you don't have a, a lot of current your voltage will sag, you know, and things go south, like this. Uh, so I'm just taking my little dandy tool here. Again, guys, I've said this before in the other videos. This is just a Craftsman. This is a brake line wrench. I think this is a brake line wrench. It's a normal wrench with a 90 degree on the end. Uh, this is a 5 16 It's been trimmed just a little bit to fit the clips. For the people that ask me what I use to get these clips off with. And then what I do is I take a little Allen wrench here for the TO247 size transistors and I'll put it right in the hole here and pop off those transistors or rectifiers, in this case it's rectifiers, off of the uh, thermal management here. This doesn't work for the TO220s, but the TO220s are pretty small they're pretty easy to they're pretty easy to get loose but yeah just uh, working along on the progress of the repair of this amplifier and just bringing you guys along with the right for the right here Ooh, that transistor definitely burned up I'm pushing on the board. What happens is it makes those two two twenties pop off of the uh, heat sink here. So so yeah, um, I think I'm going to kind of you know continue to point out that my channel is a repair channel. It's not a it's not a channel where you go to seek information on what's good, what's bad. Um, you know. That's not my place. To, I don't judge what's good or bad. If if I don't like a design, I just don't work on them. Uh, so if there's a design that you don't see on my bench, it's not a, it's not here for a reason. Uh, either I don't support the design, or I just don't service that particular line of amplifier. Kind of like uh, Rockford Fosgate, JL Audio. Um, I don't have time to repair everything. I mean, if I could. If I could bring every topology in for repair, I'd do it, you know, is to help save you guys money. 
but I just I don't have the time uh, to take in other amplifiers other brands I should say and learn their designs and their topologies and how they work and their protection circuits because these companies that I'm mentioning will not give you prints or schematics and you know unless you are doing work directly for them yeah, I mean that's just the way this world is that's the way this country is uh, years ago I started you know watching Lewis Rossman he's a great guy uh, and when I started, I think it was in 2014, is when I uh, started business here, where I'm located. Uh, opened up a business doing vacuum tube tester restorations, and I learned real fast the world of right to repair is um, is not supported. So. Which wasn't as bad, you know, when you're dealing with uh, vintage antique equipment because those parts and schematics and stuff are available. Um, you know, patents are outdated, things, information gets, you know, released for that particular thing. And uh, But once I started getting into this amplifier repair, I learned real fast, manufacturers will not divulge information to you <coughs> such as schematics uh, bill materials whatever it may be parts unless you work directly for them or you yeah, yeah I mean you can have NDAs for schematics if they're willing to do that I I always let them know I'm willing to sign an NDA I'm not I stand behind, stand behind my word. I'm, in, I'm not going to share all your stuff with other people. Uh, ruthless. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, like Maxonics, I have an NDA with Maxonics. Even though I don't uh, do any work for them directly. They are kind enough to send me customers. Uh, but, you know, Maxonics is is a line that I don't service regularly. I do. I mean, there's just a normal, another normal standard design out there, but yeah. <clears throat> so, that's my view on right to repair. That's why you see specific brands that I have on the bench. A lot of the stuff that I work on is because I directly do some work. I do directly do work for the retailer or the company. Um, I also do private repair, but I am working towards backing off on private repairs. Like you can see right over here, I have a good row of old school Ryan amps that is in for a customer that I'm. Rebuilding, rebuilding, I don't rebuild amps. Uh, repairing, I should say. Um, yeah. But come uh, come 2027 or so, when, when me and my wife, we move out of this hmm, uh, we're just gonna call it a wonderful place to be. Not really. Uh, once we move out of here, I'm probably going to be backing out of private repair and leaning more heavily into just warranty repairs. I'm getting old and trying to hunt down parts is... It takes a lot of time to find parts. It, it really is, so I wonder if I can come in a little closer on you guys here. My digital zoom, probably, the digital zoom probably really is crappy. And of course, there's my glare spot. Uh, let's see here. Can I move the camera to reduce the glare? I mean, a little bit. I don't know. I'm just trying to help you guys. It's up and down. Yeah, 
Yeah. So this power supply is in need of help. And these are gonna be the 3205s, right? Yep, and these are gonna be the 064, or 640Ns. Yep. Over time, you guys just memorize these things, learn them quick or not. Yeah, I mean, they're just, oh, hey, look, my hacko. Sorry, guys, my <laughs> things are right in your face. Um, but yeah. So I'm just gonna cut all these out. Because these are cooked. And hopefully the vias are okay. I don't think there was a ton of current that was available here, so. Uh, the burning of the board probably is not significant. At least we're gonna cross our fingers and hope it's not significant. Um, I have really uh, shied away from doing uh, PCB repair. It just takes too. It just takes too long. And uh, you know when you have when you have 40 or 50 amps in line getting waiting to be repaired, you just don't have a lot of time. So. I really, really got have, have stepped away from uh, doing physical uh, fiberglass repair of PCBs. I'll probably do it, you know, pick up, pick back up on it in the winter time when it slows down. Um, but even during the winter, the last couple of years, I've noticed uh, here locally in Washington that the competitions they they'll run through the winter, and um, I'll still have a pile of amps to fix through the winter. So, yeah there that's power supply no gate resistors no gate resistors blew up on this which yeah it tells me he didn't have a lot of current here before something opened yeah the gate resistors aren't even black they're not even dark um, so one gate resistor is that or is that a shadow oh that's a shadow yeah uh, so if you had a lot of current you'll burn every gate resistor up because there's so much short current that's available it just burns everything up until there's nothing left to burn up or until your fuse opens or your breaker opens or whatever you're using um, yeah but I'm going to rebuild this power supply. These are really super simple amps to rebuild. Uh, I mean, when it comes to functionality, they're super simple. Cut out your shorts, rebuild your power supply, get the power supply up and running. Just pulse the power supply to make sure you have rail building. Um, check for th heat, make sure you don't have any thermal issues going on in the power supply, and then rebuild your output section. So, yeah. That's where I'm going to leave this, guys. I don't like my videos to be extremely long. Um, I like to break it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to uh, go ahead and uh, stop this video here. I'm just going to do my work. We'll review the function of the power supply and go over the thermal characteristics um, on the next video here. So this will be a more like a part one just to try to help keep, limit the length of these videos. I'm going to do them in parts. So thank you, guys. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, whatever it may be, leave it down below. Um, I like to interact with you guys, and I always am thankful for your guys' input about my channel. Uh, you know, whatever it may be, like the glare on the window there. Of course, my blinds are open. Uh, I can close those for you guys, but I, I need your guys' input. So, yeah, as long as it's good input, you know, for all you guys that are seeking, hey, this, you want to know if the amp is worth buying or not, you're at the wrong channel. So, I'm about repairing. So, thanks, guys. Stay safe out there. Keep your fingers out of the rails. These things will snap at you. So we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.